90% of Excel users don't know the data cleaning tricks I'm about to show you, like how to remove all formatting from a worksheet in just one click, or how to highlight all the cells with errors in them in yellow. So in this video, we'll go over 10 super useful data cleaning tricks you probably didn't know. First up, we have the clean formats trick. So suppose you've been given an Excel file like this one over here, and it looks super messy. There's inconsistent heading colors, there's these borders, some highlights down over here. So it's a real mess and ideally you just wanna start from scratch by clearing all of the formatting. You can actually do that quite easily. First press Ctrl A to select the entire table. And then from here, we're gonna head over to this button which under the home tab, which is the clear icon and just go to clear formats. So you now have a fresh data set that you can start formatting from scratch. And if you want to follow along by using the same data set as me, head over to a link in the description below to download it completely for free. Next up in number two, we have the aggregate formula, which is great when you're working with errors. For example, over here, you can see that we have this table where there's some errors on the price. And so if we try to find the average just by typing the average function and selecting all of the prices, you'll notice that we get an error Luckily, there is a workaround and that's by using the aggregate function. Here, you'll notice you get a ton of different options. We just want to calculate the average in our case, comma, and under options, we can choose to ignore any error values. So that's number six for us and the array is the entire price range. We can then close the parenthesis and hit enter and we're able to calculate the average despite these errors. We could also add a small comment here by right clicking and going to new note, let's say. And I can quickly write that it's not accounting for errors. This way, if somebody else comes into the file, they can just hover over this area and they'll see my comment. Speaking of errors, this previous example was quite simple because we had a small data set. What about in an example like this, where we're trying to identify where the errors are located. So you can see they're actually fairly hidden. There is one over here another one here, but they're hard to identify. So there's a shortcut to identify all of them. That's by first pressing Ctrl A to select the whole table. And then we're gonna go over to find and select and click on go to special. Within this pop-up, we wanna select the formulas and more specifically, just the ones that have errors. So we'll untick and all the other ones, click on okay. And now you see we have all of the areas with the divided by zero error highlighted. We can actually highlight them in a standout color like what could be yellow and even bolden them with Control b Now you can see it's very obvious where we have errors. Moving on to number four and here we have number conversion which is actually something very common in finance. You can see here we have the GDP per country where it's actually such a big number it's probably in the trillions and so it would be nice to reduce this to change it to thousands or even to millions or billions so it's much easier to see. Right now, it looks very overwhelming. So we can first select the entire column with Control Shift down arrow, and then we're gonna press Control One. That's the pop-up for formatting. That's the same thing as going and clicking on this button right here. And we're gonna go over to Custom. And more specifically here, you can see the sample up top. And every time we wanna separate it into a thousand, we just need to add a comma at the end. You can see there, it's reduced the final three letters. I can do it again and now we're talking in millions and then another comma to talk in billions. Click on OK there. You'll see how the formatting changes but when you look inside of the cell, the number is still there in full. That's a lot better than going ahead and selecting this figure and dividing it by a thousand or dividing it by a million as that changes the number entirely. Up here under the header, we can now change it to numbers in billion. Awesome, so remember this formula as it's really quite useful if you're going to work in finance. So far we've looked at some simple skills and now we're going to get into some more advanced ones. But first, if you're looking for in-demand data skills, check out our data analyst program. The program consists of four individual courses and over 300 lessons. First in Excel, you'll learn best practices for formatting, formulas, and charts. Then you'll apply your skills with real life case studies from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and creating interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. 
Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting databases with applications like Excel and Power BI. Finally, in VBA and macros, you'll learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PNL reports, and much more. So whether you're in or looking for a career as a data analyst, business analyst, or financial analyst, join our data analyst program now and gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. Next up in number five, we have the replace wildcard, which might not make too much sense right now. So let's take a look at an example. Over here, you can see there's all these people with their names, but in fact, a lot of them have this ampersand and family and co. And down here, you even have and company and relatives. So we would like to get rid of this ampersand and the text that comes after. This is a bit tricky as it's not always the same length and there's usually some information before as well. But we can do that by first selecting the whole area with control shift down. Then I'm going to head over to the find and select and click on replace. The shortcut there is just control H. And once we see this pop up, we want to replace everything that starts with the ampersand and whatever is after the ampersand. We can do that by adding an asterisk that says that if there's anything after the ampersand, we're just going to want to get rid of it. So replace with nothing. Click on replace all. OK and close out of that. Now, if we take a look, there is no ampersand or any text after and the text before remains the same. So that's all great. Following the wildcard, in number six, we have the text join formula. So over here, we have the list of the richest people in the world and their birth year, birth month, and birthday. We would like to just have it as one date as their birthday. And so for that, we can use equals text join. Hit the top key there. The delimiter is what we want as a separator between them. So we can just put in quotations a dash. So it looks a lot more like a date, comma, Ignore empty, yeah sure, true, comma, and the text, we're gonna want the year, comma, the month, comma, and the day. We'll close up parenthesis and hit enter. That's what the first one looks like. We can then double click here to drag this down. The problem is this isn't actually a date. We can check that because up here it says general as the format, or we can choose the type function. And you can see here in the description, it says that if it's text, it's going to give us equals to two. And so we hit the tab key, we select it, close the parenthesis and hit enter. And it's type two, meaning that this is actually formatted text. That's where our seventh trick comes handy, which is the date value formula. What it does is it's going to convert any text value into a date. So we can type equals date value, hit the tab key. This is the date and hit enter. Right now it looks off, but if we change this formatting to, let's say, a long date, you'll notice that it's now properly a date. We can drag this all the way down and it seems to be working correctly. If we wanted to find their birthday, so it would be today minus when they were born, we can first type the today function up over here. This is today's date. And then down below, I can use the dated if function open the parenthesis and now we know that hey this is the start date comma this is the end date comma and we want to know their age in years so i'm gonna put a y in quotations close the parenthesis and hit enter so it's saying this person is 75 years old and if i want to drag this down i'm just gonna lock today's date with the f4 key Hit enter and now I can drag this all the way down and it's calculating everyone's age automatically. Moving on to number eight and we now have fuzzy matching and I know that sounds a bit funny but let's take a look at it. Suppose we have these two tables with information. You can see that the name column is actually the same column. The problem is their names aren't exactly the same. For example, Bill Lee here is William Lee down below. Mo West is Mohammed West. And so the names aren't exactly the same. Ideally, we want this all to be together in one table, but we need to find something in common between them, which is the name. The problem is that some are using their nicknames and some aren't. So that's where the fuzzy matching comes handy. For this, we'll first select the first table and head over to data and go to from table slash range. This is gonna open up the Power Query editor and all we want to do is click on close and load. 
that's gonna open up a new tab but we still need to process the other table so we'll go back to the original tab here head to the second table and do the same thing so it's just going to data and clicking on from table slash range now you can see under queries we have the table one and the table two we now need to merge them and we can do that by clicking on merge queries here we have table two and we want to merge it with table one and we need to select the column that we want in common which is the name relative to the name in table one two but you'll notice down below it says we have zero out of seven rows matching that's quite problematic and that's because the first names are all different right so instead we're gonna first change the join kind to a full outer join that means that we want to select all the rows and columns from both tables and we're gonna use the fuzzy matching click on that and under fuzzy matching options we want to select the similarity threshold you can see a bit of a description here but essentially if this goes to one it means that it's an exact match but if it goes to zero it means that there's no match at all so we'll go for something like 0 0.5 you can see down below it's updated to seven matches out of seven click on ok there and we can open up this table one that's now been matched to table two click on ok there and you can see that we have emily with ie is the same as emily with a y Alexis is now Alex and so it's been able to link everything correctly in fact I can move this entire column over to the side to see how well it's matched everything it all looks good so we can now click on close and load and you can see we have all the merged data here in Excel in number 9 and number 10 we're gonna get inside of Power Query which is the tool we've just used for fuzzy matching for this we have this table over here and now we can head over under date again and click on from table slash range that opens up the power query editor and let's take a look at some of the other data cleaning features here first up you can see that row 2 seems to be duplicated and there could be many more duplicates to make sure of that we can head over to remove rows and go to remove duplicates on top of that maybe we want to split the name into the first name and the last name we can do that quite easily by heading over to transform and here under split column we want to split it by a delimiter so essentially wherever there is a space that's where we want to split the column under this pop-up we want the space as the delimiter and then click on ok you can see there it's been able to split these two columns we don't need this column three so i can just right click and remove you can see that all the steps are being tracked here on the right hand side and unlike in Excel, we're not really having to use any formulas. So in some ways, this might be easier for you than using data cleaning in Excel. Now we can just go back to the Home tab, click on Close and Load. And now it's going to open up a new sheet with all of the data included. But it's now being cleaned up. As you can see, there's only one Elon Musk. And the name's been separated into the first name and the second We've just seen the tip of the iceberg as to what Power Query can do. So if you want to learn more about this powerful tool, check out this free video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.